Hello there YouTube, this is DIY Electronics and uh, today I want to talk to you about obtaining parts. Um, for a majority of the projects you're going to do, you're going to need some kind of parts, resistors, capacitors, inductors, uh, crystals, ICs, something. Um, and most of the time it's a part you ain't got. Um, what I like to do is I'm always finding electronics in the trash, people giving them to me, and I'm always taking them apart. And whether or not I take the components off, um, I may just take them apart, take the circuit board, and throw them in a the drawer. Um, kind of keep a mental inventory of what I got and what I think's on there. And uh, then I can always, you know, pull through the, dig through the drawer and, uh, you know, look for something on the board if, I'm, if I need it for the project. Um, you know, even remotes have some useful stuff in them, um, whether it be, uh, you know, little capacitors, uh, you know, the IR LEDs, um, they have a couple things in them. Um, but uh, what you want to do is you want to take every electronic device that you can get your hands on that's being thrown away, not used, um, uh, just you find anywhere someone gives to you. And you want to take it apart and take all the components out of it. And um, if you want to be well organized, take the components out and uh, label them and uh, store them somewhere that you know where they're at and what section they're in. Um, but some of the tools you're going to need to obtain those parts is going to be a, a soldering iron, of course. I have a station set up that I use just for desoldering, and that's right there. Um, I got a special tip for it. It's a chisel tip there. It's nice and wide and a square. Hang on a second. Um, it's a square tip so you get maximum amount of heat to the um, whatever you're trying to desolder. Um, it's a couple different kind of tips you can use too. For instance, like this little chisel tip here. Um, they work good too. Um, you don't want to use a, a fine point because they just don't provide the surface area to uh, hold the heat in. Um, that's better for you know trying to solder something together and not take it apart. Um, another thing you're going to need is uh, screwdrivers. Um, the more the better. The um, more types of tips you got for it. Um, uh, different bits, etc. The smaller, bigger because um, most electronics have some special screws on them that you're going to need to take out to get inside. Um, another thing you're going to need is um, I like to use a little uh, soldering work work pencil. I don't know what the hell it's called, but um, you know, so you can work the solder around if you're having trouble with a certain component. Because um, you notice on some ICs that or some uh, PCBs, you'll have problems with the, the big globs of solder, and there's just no way you can suck all that solder up so you can heat it up and actually drag the solder with your uh, solder pencil there away from the component and then suck up the last little bit with your uh, desoldering pump, which is my new favorite tool. I actually used to use a uh, bulb soldering iron, which had a little bulb and a soldering iron attached to it. But um, the tips would always wear out and they'd get clogged up and not work and it was just a pain in the ass. Um, another thing you can use but I wouldn't recommend is solder wick. Um, that's more for uh, cleaning up a PCB when you're soldering it, not for uh, desoldering. Um, another nice little thing to have is a little uh, clip-on heat sink. You can clip it onto the leads on the actual side of the component and then uh, desolder on the other side and it'll take the heat away so that you're not um, damaging the component when you're desoldering it with the heat. Um, sometimes though you're not going to be able to get the components you need from you know these circuit boards. Sometimes you're going to need a special IC or a crystal or an inductor or something that you just don't got. Um, a uh, website I like to use for obtaining those parts is uh, DigiKey. Um, they have a, they have an awesome part selection. Um, their prices are fair. Um, shipping's good. Um, 
one thing you know I wouldn't order a lot of from them is like resistors and capacitors depending on what kind of capacitor you need but your basic ceramics you know I, I'd try to grab them off a PCB or something um, just to save yourself the money um, but they they're fair priced the majority of their ICs some of them are up there but you know but they have a huge selection um, it's where I order 95% of my parts there's a couple other sites I order my resistors and stuff from but um anyways like I was saying I just wanted to touch base on um uh, taming parts and just where you can get them um some people are you know are scared to pop open um you know from different electronics um and there's reason to be scared to take some stuff apart um, don't be taking apart TVs, um, like old CRT TVs with the catheter tube, because, uh, I think the voltage for those is like 50,000 volts that they, um, to charge the tube or something, and, um, you know, they have 50,000 volt capacitors in there that if you were to get hit by it, kill you instantly, but, um, one of the things is that always safe to take apart is anything that operates on like in a car like an amp for instance runs off 12 volts nothing in this is going to hurt you this thing could be plugged in and you know i could touch everything on the back of this and you know i'm making a little zap or something but it ain't going to kill me um you know anything that has a uh, dc converter box before the actual component like you know if it has a DC jack on it and it actually has a, a little box or something before it that looks like that well not like that but looks like you know that and then you got the wire going to the plug in and then the wire going to the component or hardware um, that's safe to take apart because what it's doing is that little box is converting the AC electricity to DC and once it's in DC form um, it, it takes a lot of DC volts to uh, hurt you. Um, so, you know, anything on that board charged up isn't going to hurt you. Um, what else here? Just take precaution. Um, if, if you think, you know, this, this capacitor here is charged up. Let me see if I can get that in the focus. Let's say you thought that capacitor there was charged up and you took the thing apart and you didn't want to get shot. Well, best thing to do is um, short out the leads from the power here, and um, just short that out for you know 30 seconds to discharge all the power out of the board, or take you a uh, little metal, uh, you know, like a screwdriver or something, and you know make sure it has a rubber handle. It's not just all metal. And this isn't a good example. Let me grab this. You know, take something with this, like a plastic handle, metal shaft. Um, so you take the capacitor there, jump to the bottom, and uh, locate the prongs for it, which are going to be right there, and just touch both those leads together, and it may make a little spark, and that'll discharge the capacitor, and um, you'll be good to go. There's, you know, like I said, if it's a DC board like this, it's not going to hurt you. Um, like in a lot of electronics you take apart you'll have two separate PCBs you know one being over here and one being over here and then the wires connecting them and then one of them will have a big old transformer on it connected to a bunch of capacitors and stuff going to the actual AC power cord to the wall and you'll have little wires that jump over to your DC board over here and what this is doing here is converting the AC electricity to a DC and then sending it over to the board um, so if you were to take it apart and you just took this out and left this in there and you know threw the component a little, threw it away you know you ain't gonna worry about getting electrocuted by the power still in those capacitors um, but like I said if you just short out the system you know where the power comes in you can discharge the whole system so that you're not having to worry about getting shocked by it or just hold the power button on the, the system and drain it that way um, just take precautions um, 
and don't get yourself into something you get hurt. Um, you have questions, ask. Uh, there's plenty of websites. You, know, you can ask me on my forums or actually on my comments there. Um, and I'll give you my honest opinion about it. Um, appreciate you all watching. This is DIY Electronics.